Possible teases that Mercedes Monet, formerly known as Sasha Banks, could be set for a WW return. AW president and CEO Tony Khan gives an update on the initial ticket sales for AW All In next year at London's Wembley Stadium. Speaking of ticket sales and Tony Khan, Ring of Honor's final battle has concerning ticket sales and has received some criticism from a former AEW star. Randy Orton officially signs with SmackDown last night as he kicks off his feud with the Bloodline, seemingly paving the way for a match against Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. CM Punk will make his return to SmackDown next week and Logan Paul announces the tournament to crown a new number one contender for the United States Championship. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about Mercedes Monet, of course, formerly known as Sasha Banks. Should she be the latest name set for a major return to WWE? Former WWE star Mercedes Monet, formerly known as Sasha Banks, has shared some photos from her match against Kyrie Sane from earlier this year. At New Japan's Battle in the Valley event, Mercedes Monet defeated Kyrie to win the IWGP Women's Championship. Monet went on to lose the title to Mayo Iwatani a few months later and then suffered a serious ankle injury in May of this year too. Meanwhile, Kairi Sane made her return to WWE at Crown Jewel 2023 and has joined Monet's former tag team partner Bailey in the Damage Control Stable. With the former Sasha Banks on the road to recovery, there have been many rumors and reports regarding the possibility of Monet making a return to WWE. Now, on December 1st, Monet took to Instagram to post photos of her match against Kyrie Sane at Battle of the Valley. We'll get in that in just a second. But also, let's start off with Bailey getting involved here as well. You can see right here, she posted this training montage of her on social media as she gets closer to returning to the ring. Bailey quote tweeted Mo the Monet training video on Twitter with quote, the greatest is yet to come. Now, as I mentioned, Monet also posted the following photos to her Instagram story. One against Kyrie there, a second against Kyrie earlier this year at the Battle in the Valley event. Again, it's very interesting timing because some people would suggest that the timing is interesting with WWE announcing that Sane will face Bianca Belair, face Bianca Belair last night on SmackDown in a singles match. And certainly with Bailey letting down, I suppose, her damage control teammates, not only on SmackDown, but at Survivor Series War Game, has this laid the foundations for a possible Mercedes Monet return? What are your thoughts on this? Do you think we could see the former Sasha Banks back in WWE? Is this just a case of Monet getting people talking about her prior to her making a pro wrestling return? Do you think she's set for a, a, a signing with AEW. Of course, she was at AEW All In earlier this year. Tony Khan has spoken about the possibility of wanting to work with her. Where do you think the former Sasha Banks will land? Let me know your thoughts, as always, in the comment section below. Now, speaking of AEW All In, we've got an update when it comes to the first day ticket sales for the major stadium events next year in London, England. Tony Khan has provided an update on AEW All In London 2024 first day ticket sales. On August 27, 2023, All Elite Wrestling held their biggest event of all time with AEW All In London from Wembley Stadium. The event reportedly set the record for the most paid attendance for a pro wrestling event with 81,035 tickets sold. Tickets for the 2024 installment of the event went on sale Friday, December 1st. The pre-sale tickets added up to over 27,000 tickets sold. On Friday evening, AEW President Tony Khan took to social media to provide an update on the first day ticket sales. You can see Khan's tweets right here. He said, quote, Thank you to all who made today's hashtag AEW All In on sale a huge success for AEW and Wembley Stadium. Our 2023 ticket on sale was in May. This time we began five months sooner. On day one, AEW's already sold over over $4 million in tickets, over £3 million. Just getting started, All In is nine months away. Of course, Khan has already announced that Brian Danielson will appear at next year's All In London. Obviously, the next pay-per-view is, of course, AEW's World's End, taking place on Saturday, December 30, on Long Island in New York. But if you want to actually know numbers, WrestleTix has provided an update when it comes to the amount of tickets already distributed for the events at Wembley. You can see it right here. They posted AEW All In 2024, first count, Sunday, August 25th, 2024, Wembley Stadium, London. Available tickets, 10,000. 
5,529. The current setup is 44,452. And the key number here, the amount of tickets distributed as of the count yesterday is 33,923. Now, if you're wondering why are they just only opening up 44,452 tickets, most likely it's because they're going to do what they did last year, which is if they sell out of all of these 44,000 tickets, they'll then start to open up more and more and more which is kind of par for the course when it comes to stadium shows. They open up more uh, more areas, more sections as they sell more tickets. So what are your thoughts on this number thus far? What are your thoughts on uh, over $4 million in ticket sales for All In? Reportedly, the ticket price is higher than it was last year, so they would actually probably surpass their gate for uh, next year's events. And what are your thoughts on over 33,000, or actually close to 34,000 reportedly already being distributed? Do you think they'll match the number that they did last year? Do you think it'll be less do you think it'll be more let me know your thoughts your predictions as always in the comment section below now speaking of ticket sales and tony khan we go from i guess some positive news for aw all in at wembley stadium and some concerning and worrying news for ring of honor's final battle events now ring of honor final battle is looking more like an episode of aw dark that's according to an ex aw star going off the latest ticket sale figures ring of honor final battle 2023 will take place on december 15 from the curtis colwell center in garland texas the show will be the 22nd final battle event as well as the sixth Ring of Honor pay-per-view since Tony Khan's purchase of the promotion. With Final Battle now less than two weeks away, tickets for the show have been hardly flying out of um, the availability. Now, the Curtis Colwell Center, we can actually get this up on the screen right now. The Curtis Carwell Center um, has a capacity of 8,500, but the current setup is for 3,722 fans. But so far, less than 1,000 tickets, 996,000 tickets have been distributed, equivalent to 26.76% of the available tickets for the show. Now, on Twitter, former AEW star Joey Janela reacted and suggested what needs to be changed. We can actually get Janela's tweet up here on the screen right now. He said, quote, that sucks. Run smaller buildings 100%. Why isn't this in the New York City market? And run Ring of Honor like an independent promotion, three to four shows a month. Find a booker and someone to run the ship. Tony doesn't have to be there. I guarantee a huge increase in Honor Club subscribers and a better overall exciting product for fans. This is AW Dark Deluxe. Now, at this time, two matches have been announced for the event. Ring of Honor Women's World Champion Athena will put her title on the line against Billy Starks. Athena has been using Starks and Lexi Nair as her minions. On the most recent episode of ROH Wrestling, Athena announced that only Nair was a valedictorian and that Starks had failed to pass minion training. This caused Starks to snap, attack Athena, and request a title match from Tony Khan. The other match announced for the show will see a full way to determine the next Ring of Honor World Television Champion. The title had previously been held by Samoa Joe, who vacated the gold a few weeks back. The survival of the fittest tournament finals will feature Dalton Castle, Commander, and two more participants yet to be determined. So what are your thoughts on the real concerning ticket sales or lack thereof for Ring of Honor Final Battle? Is it because just nobody cares? Is it because there's a lack of a TV deal? Is it because there's only two matches announced? Let me know your thoughts, your reaction to this in the comment section below. Now, switching gears here and talking about SmackDown last night, Randy Orton was a free agent, but he's a free agent no more. CM Punk still might be a free agent within WWE, but the other man who returned at Survivor Series, Randy Orton, has made his decision. In the main event segment of Friday's SmackDown, Orton accepted SmackDown General Manager Nick Aldis's offer to become an official member of the Blue Brand, even given Aldis an RKO afterward to seal the deal. Orton signing the SmackDown contract was the culmination of a segment that saw both Aldis and his Raw counterpart Adam Pearce make in-ring pleas to retain Orton's services, with Pearce offering Orton a World Heavyweight Championship match, while Aldis offered him revenge against the Bloodline, who, in storyline, were responsible for Orton's lengthy absence due to injury. At this point, Paul Heyman interrupted, intending for the Bloodline members Jey Uso and Solo Sokoa to demolish Orton before he could sign anything. In reality, Heyman just seemed to make Orton's choice easier. Easier. After LA Knight, ca LA Knight came down to even the odds and fought off Sokoa, Orton delivered an RKO to Uso before eagerly putting pen to paper and telling Heyman to inform his tribal chief that daddy's home. 
Orton immediately resuming his feud with the Bloodline not only makes storyline sense, uh, he was actually reportedly in line for a match against Reigns at SummerSlam 2022 before being put on the shelf, a spot that was eventually filled by Brock Lesnar, and it also lines up with recent reporting which suggested that Orton was on the shortlist for Reigns' opponent at the 2024 Royal Rumble Premium Live event. And now it looks like we are going to be seeing the Viper face off against the Tribal Chief. Now, CM Punk, we got some CM Punk information last night on SmackDown. He is going to be on next week's episode, a tribute to the Troops special of SmackDown. Next week's episode of SmackDown will be the annual tribute to the Troops special, and it just got an added boost in none other than CM Punk, who will make his first SmackDown appearance since January 7, 2014. Punk's return to WWE flipped the wrestling world on its head at Survivor Series last weekend, and his promo on Raw two nights later made the headlines all over as well. It is still yet to be determined which brand, if either, Punk will be assigned to, or if he's going to continue on as a free agent, but with Randy Orton landing on SmackDown, as of announced last night, it stands to reason that Punk will have a permanent home as well at some point. It has not been yet made clear yet as to whether or not Punk will appear on Raw this coming Monday, but he will be on SmackDown next week, and it certainly most likely will be another attention grabber. The last time CM Punk was part of an episode on SmackDown came less than three weeks before he departed the company, competing in a six-man tag team match alongside the New Age Outlaws against The Shield. If his promo from the other night is to be believed, he won't need any such alliance, having said, I'm not here to make friends, I'm here to make money. What do you think will happen when it comes to Punk next week? Let me know your thoughts. Now, one person who's been quite a critic of CM Punk is Eric Bischoff. But Bischoff has actually spoken with John Albon Strictly Business Business, and he was asked to provide his initial reaction to Punk's return and he actually was somewhat positive. He said, quote, I was pissed because like two weeks before, I made another dumbass bet with Conrad on 83 weeks because Conrad said, I believe we're going to see CM Punk back in WWE before the end of the year. I said, I don't think so. It doesn't make sense to me. They don't need him right now. Survivor Series is sold out. It's already getting a ton of buzz. Where is the added value? This is not my opinion of CM Punk, the performer, or Phil Brooks, the individual. I don't know him, the individual. Never had a conversation with him. Don't know what he's like beyond what we see and hear about publicly. But just because WWE is so freaking hot right now uh, that there is no hole in their roster, there is no need. It's not like an NFL team that needs to get a better offensive line and we've got to find that one guy who can be our anchor. There were no holes. So it was like, if you're going to pull that trigger and bring in a guy who is as controversial as Punk is, who has done a great job of keeping himself front and center in terms of controversy why would you use it on a night when you don't need it when asked to describe how he felt about wwe pulling off such a big surprise at the end bischoff replied quote cm punk showing up in wwe clearly there's what a decade's worth of story there his role in wwe the way he left the pipe bomb promo which by the way i found out subsequently was actually written for him but the story is there there's been this anticipation that's been brewing since the minute he left AEW. oh is he going to come back yes he is no he isn't the anticipation has been there almost instantly i didn't think it had to be created or manufactured the reality is the authenticity of it all all of the stuff we've been reading about for 18 months with regard to punk and aw and the drama with the elite the press conference that's all real that isn't a storyline those are things that happened it's authentic it's not a manufactured story so you've got a great story history backstory Bischoff continued on to explain how WWE was able to pull this off and everything they have at play with the fallout saying, quote, you've got anticipation that was built from the moment the news broke that Punk was being let go. The authenticity can't be doubted. The surprise was pulled off perfectly. And now we have action coming up next. That's the easy part of wrestling. The action is the easy part. The story is the hard part. Creating anticipation is a challenge. Keeping it real and authentic is also a big challenge, especially in the world of professional wrestling. Surprises are few and far between authentic authentic ones, ones that really catch people by surprise, and you get the response that you hope for, which clearly happened at Survivor Series. All that's left now is where does he go? What's the action like? I don't think there's any question we're going to see great action, especially because there's a great story and there's a lot of anticipation for who he's going to work with and what that storyline is going to look like. I think Punk coming in at Survivor Series knocked it completely out of the park, which indicates to me that this is going to be a very, very successful, long-term financially successful decision, provided that the wheels don't fall off because of personal issues. Bischoff concluded by stating that his WWE run could be even better for Punk than his first 
first if he's motivated. He said, quote, I'm pretty sure Punk is going to, provided he wants to, motivation is the core of this, right? If Punk woke up and said, look, I want to have one more really, really good run. And if he's willing to be a team player, I think he's going to be very su successful in WWE. He's not going to be able to get away with the same kind of silliness, or, nor will he be exposed to the same kind of backstage environment that he was exposed to in AEW. He's going to have to learn to deal with a more corporate, structured environment. If he's willing, if his intentions are such that he really wants to make this work and be a team player, I think his second run will be better than his first in WWE. What are your thoughts on Bischoff's comments there? Do you think this second run could be better than his first in WWE? If, of course, Punk is willing to be a team player like Bischoff said. Finally, Logan Paul has given some more information about his next challenger for the United States Championship. Nothing that a champion, noting that a champion is only good as his challengers, WWE United States Champion Logan Paul hit the ring on Friday's episode of SmackDown to announce that he and general manager Nick Aldis had agreed to an eight-man tournament beginning next week that will determine the next US title contender. Participants in this tournament were revealed to be Santos Escobar, Dragon Lee, Karrion Cross, Bobby Lashley, Grayson Waller, Austin Theory, and Kevin Owens. Additionally, adding a bit of intrigue to the announcement, Paul noted that an unknown superstar from NXT would be joining the field shortly. Uh, sh joining the field shortly after, top NXT star Carmelo Hayes posted a photo of himself holding a variant U.S. title belt popularized by John Cena. Lashley and Owens are both three times United States champions, while Theory has held the belt on two occasions. Logan Paul defeated Rey Mysterio at Crown Jewel earlier this year to capture the United States title, utilizing brass knuckles to secure the victory. Now, he's not defended the bout to date, so his match against whomever prevails in this newly announced tournament will be his first defense. Paul has never competed one-on-one -on -one against any of the eight participants and had only had so much as shared a ring with Escobar at Money in the Bank and Theory in the Royal Rumble match, both earlier this year, before he was joined in the ring on SmackDown by Owens, who made it clear he intends to be the man who dethrones Paul. So who do you think is going to win that tournament? And uh, do you think there's any chance that person could actually dethrone Logan Paul from his US Championship crown? Now, speaking of Paul as well, he has also announced that Randy Orton will be the next guest on his Impulsive podcast, the first interview that the Viper has completed since his return to WWE. But there you go, guys. This is the latest pro wrestling news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe button right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.